Hello everybody, Jamie here from FM Scout. We have 10 football manager ways that you can make your game more realistic. Now, many of us that's been playing the game for years and years, we, we do struggle because it's it becomes really easy and you, you learn the game quite well, you know exactly what players to look for, you know exactly how to be successful, even at a lower league club, at a big club. So there is ways that I want to show you that you can import into your save and just make sure that it gives you a bit, a bit more of a challenge. And honestly, you might find a lot more enjoyment from some of these tips. If you enjoy this video, please hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. We are getting closer and closer to 80,000 subscribers. And we cannot wait. So if you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe. And also, now let me know in the comments below if you guys use any of these ways that you play Football Manager. I want to know your story. That's the main thing of this video. It's going to be a nice little comment section, hopefully. So let me know how you play Football Manager. Without further ado, let's talk about number one. The first thing we're going to talk about is player attribute masking. So I know a lot of players, this is the most popular one that people don't use. Some people do use it just to make scouting easier, but this is a video basically how to make the game realistic. Now, if you think in real life, can you go to a player in Argentina if you're an English manager and see exactly the technique of the player, the finishing of the player, the tackling of the player? No, you can't. So that's the whole reason that people disable player attribute or well, enable player attribute masking. So make sure that's unticked. And I'm going to show you if you don't use it, what it looks like when you start a game. So I've just took over Leicester for this. And you can see on the screen when a player is at your club, you can, of course, see his attributes because you work with the player quite a lot. Now, if I go to the player search, and this generally is the case when you look at players in a different nation. So because obviously, if you think about it, you're seeing the players a lot on TV and stuff like that. So generally players in that nation, you'll be able to see the attributes. But if I go to a foreign nation, let's say... I don't know, let's find one, let's say Paulino. You can see it's kind of got an idea of of kind of what them attributes are between. So you can see if you hover over it, so all attributes are between 1 and 20, of course. But it gives you a 13 to 15, and that's kind of what it could be about. Now, if you go for a player that's relatively unknown to the world of football, let's just say, if I can find a foreign player, let's give you an example. Maybe I've gone too far down. Let's go up a little bit more. Let's try actually this green gully, Jay Davis. So again, you can see a little bit of, of attribute difference right there. You can see. But the best way to do this is obviously by scouting the player. So it just means basically that you have to scout the player a lot more. So you obviously just right click, scout, and then uh, you can assign the scout. And you can assign him for until full knowledge, or you can do it for three months, a week, two weeks. Generally, it takes a few weeks to get full knowledge of the player. So it makes pre-season a little bit more longer because you're having to wait for the scout reports. But a lot of people like doing attribute masking, and it's one of the things on FM where if you don't use attribute masking, people aren't a fan of you. That's that's the kind, because I don't use it, because when I stream on Twitch, that's twitch.tv forward slash FM scout. But I don't use it because it just it makes the process a little bit too long for me. Um, but I'm not trying to play FM more realistically. I'm trying to have fun. And you can have fun with it being realistic as well, which is the whole point of this video. But attribute masking is a very big subject on Football Manager. So I want you to let me know in the comments, do you use attribute masking or do you disable it? Now, the next one is for the hardcore players. Trust me. So... You've talked about attribute masking. The next one is to actually hide the attributes with a skin panel. So you can see on the screen right now, every single player I've got at my Burnley team has no attributes. You just get an idea of the color, which can be changed as well. So if you need to change this, it can be done in the skin, which I'll show you. But you are literally, when it comes to this, relying on the, the kind of the report from the scouts and, of course, the star ratings. Now... Star ratings, a lot of people don't believe in, but in this case, you'd have to believe in the star ratings. But this is a really hard way to play the game. Now, if you can't search by attributes, it means you have to rely on your staff a lot more, which in theory is what people think is realistic. And in that, in this case, it is. 
because you can't see, you can't really judge a determination or, or, or a first touch of a player, well, a scout can. But, you, again, you just have to rely on the scout's opinion of the player. It will give you, again, in the in the report, which is a coach report. And you have to kind of rely on this. So, But in terms of signing players, it can be extremely difficult. For example, if you are looking for a new gen and you can't see his attributes, how do you do this? For me, this is something that I wouldn't use because I, I just don't know how I'd sign the players. Now, this is something that I've re recently kind of heard of. And if there, I'll be very surprised if there is anyone in the comments who play like this. But if you if you think you can give this a go, again, let me know in the comments. But that is hiding attributes. And let me show you how to do it. So you go to your preferences. You go to skin type skin at the top. Go to skin colors. And then all you'll do is press show advanced settings. And in terms of the defaults, these are the defaults. So all you're going to do is change these top ones to number one. Just like that. Press confirm, and then that will hide all the attributes. Now, you can, of course, change other things if you want, but this is basically just the attribute. So if you need to reset it, just press restore, and then that will go back to normal, as you can see in a second. But, yeah, a very difficult way to play Football Manager and probably the most realistic way to play Football Manager. But this is how it looks, obviously, when it goes back. But, yeah, that is hide attributes. Just a quick one now. So no first transfer window. You can see... If you press this, you can actually disable the first transfer window. So if you have a little read of it, it does say Football Manager typically starts a new game in the same preseason that has just happened in the real world. Therefore, the database reflects this in the squad. So, yeah, it's very realistic to actually start and disable the first transfer window when starting a new save. The next one is no coaching badges and no rep. Why would you start with the highest rep in the game? It's very realistic to actually start with no badges and no rep. It makes it harder to sign players. Players are less interested. You have to work the way up the ladder. So when I start a save, every time, no matter who I start with, I always make sure that my coaching badges is that and my past playing experience is a Sunday league footballer. The next one is stick to initial scouting rules. Now, this can be done via the club culture and it also obviously helps with the board so to make it realistic as possible, if the board tell you you have to do something, you have to do it. Now, there's been cases where I've ignored the board for the club culture, but I've won the league, which has made them happy, and they've kind of forgot about everything else. So you can see these are some preferred and favoured. So as Aston Villa, they want me to not sign players over the age of 28 and sign players under the age of 23. So that's something that you should stick with. That will make it realistic, because if the board and your manager tells you to do something, You've got to do it. The next one is you should only hire players that your scouts have filed a report on. And you cannot use the player search. Again, this is a very difficult way to play football manager. But as you guys can imagine, in real life football, I'm pretty sure Pep Guardiola doesn't sit there going through a list of players just like this and have them all on a plate for him. Of course, he uses his scouts to go out and find the players. Now, your assignments should be set by your scout. You shouldn't really do the assignments yourself. So if you go into the responsibilities, go to scouting and ensure your assigning scouts is set to your director of football or somebody else. So when your scouts do find your players and they come in this list just through here, this is the only place that you can sign your players from. You cannot use the player search. And if you go to your assignments, you keep your assignments going. You try and build your assignments up. You can see previous reports. And these are the only players that you can sign is the players that come through your reports via your scouts. <laughs> On to the next one now. This one made me laugh. This one is you cannot use the staff search filters. So you can see, again, the same concept of player search. You wouldn't have a list of staff to go through like this. The only way you can sign staff is by going to the job center and placing an advert for your staff because that's how it would work in real life. A club would put an advert out, someone would go and apply for the job, and that's the way that they would build their their staff team. So you can obviously put this put the um, put the advert out, and then you will obviously get the adverts come back once you um, yeah once you get them. But it says you'll be notified of any interested applicants. Well, this is a really good way to build your staff and see if you can do it that way.
The next one is kind of two combined, so not to download tactics or shortlists of the best players. So again, I, to, for me, I really wouldn't even use a tactical style. If you want to play the game at realistic, you have to create your own style, surely. Because a big part of being a manager is learning the opposition, learning your team, finding out what fits right for your team, and going into game by game. Some people even change their tactics every single game based on the opposition. So I really think if you want to play the game as realistic as possible, you have to do your research on the next team. You have to fit a formation and a tactic based on your next game, as every, as majority of the managers do in real life. Yes, they might play a 4-4-1-1 throughout most of the games, but when they play bigger teams, they adapt. When they play weaker teams, they might adapt as well. So that is a very big thing in regards to making FM more realistic. Touching on the shortlist, again, you shouldn't really use shortlist because the fun for me is finding out all the players myself on Football Manager. Now, I've got a lot of shortlists here, which is what I've made for FM Scout. And a lot of people download it. I mean, if you don't want to do this, then this video is pretty pointless to you. But if you do want to make it realistic, using shortlists just doesn't really make it realistic if you want to find them players yourself. And sometimes it can almost be like a spoiler. You know, you could be that guy that finds that player in a run who becomes the next big thing. And you'll have, the, have in the back of your mind that you found him a few years ago on FM and you didn't use any shortlist to find the guy. The next one is playing the full squad. Now, FM, of course, has less injuries usually than in real life for the Premier League, for example. And playing the full squad, a heavy rotation throughout the old team is a big way to make the game realistic because that's what happens in real life. Now, I've seen games where a player plays 50, 60 games on FM. And, I mean, so in, on occasions, that can be correct. But... I mean, it's 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 a tricky one, but it, like in the cups, for example, in the in the Premier League or in the FA Cup, you know, teams will heavily rotate, and sometimes you see a lot of people not rotating enough on Football Manager. So I thought I'd put that in here. But heavy rotation is a big thing on FM. The final one is starting from the very bottom. Now, if you as a manager going into a game, it would be very hard to be fair to even start at the National League North. I mean, some of the managers there are still very, very good. So it's very hard without installing like a, a editor data for a lower league of England or a lower league of what you're you're currently managing in. But, you know, it's possible that you can be a manager of a club, say, in the 10th, 11th, 12th tier. So whether you want to start from that and work your way up, that is a very realistic option to do. Now, for me, starting in the National North is still quite unrealistic because... The only way I feel like I could manage a club in real life is probably an amateur club. And even that would be still quite tricky to get into. So, yeah, for me, you'd have to start from the very bottom as a manager and work your way up. But that has been the end of the video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Please let me know in the comments if you feel like there's any more. And I can make a second video on this if we do get about 10 more. It's, it's been a pleasure and I hope you've enjoyed it. Something a little bit different today. And I'll see you all next time. Goodbye, everybody.